Well, well there's some trial work be that we've been doing uh, on reducing soya or eliminating it completely from, from diets. I mean, the first thing to say is that soya is a, a highly economic raw material in a lot of livestock feeds. That's why we use large volumes of it. It's a very good source of, of the sort of amino acids that we need for feeding livestock. However, despite that, there are supply chains and some demand for diets which exclude soya or reduce it. So, yeah, we've been looking at that on both the layer and the uh, broiler side. It is possible to do. You can exclude soya from diets uh, and maintain the level of technical performance but it does cost more uh, and therefore uh, our view is it's likely to happen and be used in a supply chain environment where effectively those additional costs can be passed up through the supply chain and ultimately onto the consumer if they're willing to pay for it. What you have to do is find alternative sources of the protein, because obviously what the soya is providing you is with the, with the protein and the amino acids. So you can look at replacing them with more homegrown uh, proteins like rapeseed meal and sunflower meal, for example. Those are sort of classic alternatives that you will turn to. On the longer run, people are looking at things like, and we're looking at things like insect protein. I think it's a few years away yet, but it's of quite considerable interest, highly sustainable, and there's quite a lot of research work going on. But in the immediate term, it's looking at more alternatives, uh, homegrown own uh, proteins such as the sun's flowers and the rapeseed meals etc. We're um, for the moment we're reducing uh, soya about 50 percent so um, average broiler feed is about 30 percent and I think we go down to about um, 15 percent now. Okay. What made you decide to do that? Um, and so we, d oh, we did only some tests with a with, uh, few houses, just to look where our borders are, see how far we could go. We uh, even went without soya, which, uh, which is also uh, not a really big, uh, big problem. But um, we went back for all our farms now uh, at a, a level of about 15-20% soya. And do you notice any difference in the birds? By, take, by replacing the soy with something else? Yeah, you see different color of manure. You see different color of your feet. If you put soy in your feet, you, all, each flock is equal with feed conversion. And if you, the higher you go, the more spread you have in, in feet, in your feed conversion. So something's changing and soy is not in your feet for nothing. So it has its reasons. But, um, but it's certainly uh, a possibility to, uh, to grow your uh, birds without, uh, without soya. What, what, what is it replaced with when you replace it with something else? Uh, mainly with um, sun and with uh, rapeseed. And in terms of uh, the cost, is there a, a difference in cost in feed with less soya or not? Yeah, it depends on the market. Eh? Sometimes uh, soya is more expensive than other times and uh, sometimes sun and rape is uh, cheaper than other times. So actually you have to calculate all the time and um, that's also what makes you to decide to, to feed more or less soya at certain moments.